NFL insider for CBS Sports Mm -hmm. and host of The Crew and Undefined with Josina Anderson. Josina, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Hey, Joy, thanks for having me. I'm so proud of you doing everything that you're doing. You know, obviously there's a lot going on in sports, so we got a lot to talk about, girl, right? We sure do. So I opened the show talking about the giant statement regarding Brian Flores, which I felt was pretty tone deaf and aggressive considering the situation. Obviously, they're accused of something very serious, but... This is still a problem all around the NFL. And you as an organization have never had a black coach in 97 years. In fact, you've only ever had five black coordinators in almost a century. So it felt a little tone deaf considering the circumstances, not only surrounding the organization, but also the NFL. What was your reaction to the giant statement? Well, I think you have to go back to the initial statement from the National Football League that ended without... Uh, saying that they have no merit, you know, that these allegations have no merit. And I think that in and of itself was hasty, right? Um, Even if these allegations end up being uh, proven that, um, you know, they're not substantive or they're not accurate, they're still worthy of review. And so for a league that has done so much to try to increase diversity and done that, you know, in conjunction with the formulation of the Fritz Pollard Alliance and done that with the uh, construction of the Rooney Rule. Um, All of those things coming together are positive, right? But when somebody brings up claims uh, that are troublesome, that are concerning, they are also worthy of review. Now, I understand the points that the Giants are trying to make that the text from Bill Belichick allegedly, obviously, are not connected to their organization. Bill Belichick did not uh, participate in the hiring. But the question still stands, you know, uh, as far as if you were to go down a line of questioning with Bill, um, where did he get that information from? Where did he get that notion from? That is what, you know, all of us would like to know, because the fact that, uh, you know, Brian Flores comes in there and to him, it feels predetermined before he even interviews um, is not a feeling that you want to have, let alone of the fact that it it would seem uh, that it's inauthentic. Yeah. And they hired Joe Judge as their last head coach prior to Brian (laughs) Dable. So I think you've Mm -hmm. talked about Bill, uh, you've talked to Bill Belichick about, you Mm -hmm. know, coaches in the past, not so mm-hmm. long ago. It's not that outrageous. And while that might not hold up in a situation in court, we all know what really goes on here. And I'm sure you can relate to that feeling as I can, where you're in a situation where you feel like no matter what you do here, there really is no hope. And that is, you know, the word he used in the interview that stuck with me is you feeling humiliated. And that's that's part of the reason why this is such a big deal, because we've heard black coaches talk about this for years regarding the Rooney rule, which at its intent is good, but the exercise of it is not really being enforced. And as we can see, it's not having the effect it needs to have. We just saw another hire today in Doug Peterson. So if the rest of the vacant head coaching spots are filled by black coaches, assuming that Kevin O'Connell has the Vikings job, that means there'll be a grand total of four black coaches in the NFL. So what is, what, what is the solution that you have for this particular predicament? Well, I think, you know, you hear a lot of talk around the Rooney rule and, you know, everyone has their opinion as to how effective it is. But what I don't think is up for debate is the intent of the rule. And I think sometimes when you're trying to qualify how uh, productive something is, is to consider the inverse, right? What would it be like without the Rooney rule? Would we just have a a parade of uh, people that are not of color doing these interviews? Would it be uh, less transparent? You know, so and I kind of use it and, uh, you know, kind of put it to the analogy of when a team is, you know, considering another quarterback, you know, you're only as good as what your options are. Right. So if it's not the Rooney rule, then what is the option to make it better? Now, I've been talking to some coaches, you know, just trying to get their feeling of their reaction to the uh, Brian Flores lawsuit. And while I don't feel this big sense of wanting to come to arms, and even I was talking to a source this morning that said 
that, you know, per their information that Brian Flores is, and their legal team is trying to talk to different uh, coaches around the league to see, you know, what their stories are, vet it, um, if they want to participate in the class action lawsuit. But even still, uh, you have this, you know, fear. And what is the end goal? You know, that's what a coach said to me. What, what, where are we going from here? What is the plan B? I had another coach who said to me, you know, how much can you really press owners uh, to make a decision that they don't want? You know what I'm saying? And is the, and is the solution to have expansion teams where you can get maybe more of a funnel of diversity on those expansion teams. That's what someone else was saying. And then the other thing that they said is just as a commentary is that they would like to see Mike Tomlin, who is the only uh, black uh, coach in the NFL right now uh, to speak up more on this situation because of his tenure, because of his security within the Steelers organization and also his economic security. So even if you don't have him speaking up, uh, even more so, um, that, you know, that is somewhat uh, problematic, you know what I'm saying, for at least the people that I was talking to. Um, we've had some coaches start to talk um, at the Senior Bowl, what have you, you heard from Terrell Austin and, you know, some of the other coaches that have, you know, spoken up yeah. uh, to a degree. But like you said, what, what really, where is this going? Where is this going as far as Brian Flores' lawsuit? And how much can you actually tie it to whatever happened to him uh, because of race specifically. Joy Taylor in for Colin Cowher. We're talking to Josina Anderson. So the other side of this lawsuit, which is very explosive, is a situation with Stephen Ross and the Dolphins and allegedly offering Brian Flores to money, $100,000 a game to lose, which to me, if that ends up being proven true, I don't know how he can maintain ownership of the team. But what are you hearing regarding the NFL's investigation towards uh, or around Stephen Ross and the Dolphins and these accusations? Well, first of all, like I said, so the NFL said that, you know, in their initial statement that his allegations were without merit. And then there was reporting from uh, Chris Mortensen following that, uh, saying that the league did intend to have an investigation, even specifically into that allegation, which, you know, obviously have proven true. We don't want to have any connection to sports bribery in the National Football League, which would obviously be very problematic. I mean, I, I, it's going to come down to uh, evidence and what Brian Flores can uh, tangibly show uh, shows that this actually occurred beyond just him saying this. And I know that there's a report from NFL Network saying that, uh, you know, there's a witness to this conversation happening. All of those things will play out, you know, as this lawsuit unfolds when it comes to discovery, uh, further interviews and what have you. Um, you know, I don't have anything to say whether it was definitively true or not true, but it is uh, good to hear that now the NFL has taken the step to say that they will at least acknowledge and vet, you know, that specific claim uh, and to what degree that they do that well remains to be seen. We're talking to Josina Anderson. So we found out that the Jacksonville Jaguars have made a hire at head coach. It's Doug Peterson. I thought he was the the best candidate on the market. Won a Super Bowl, did it with Nick Foles, very experienced on the offensive side of the Andy Reid tree. Was it a priority for Jacksonville to hire an experienced head coach? Well, you know, the coaching search started with Doug Peterson. I mean, you can't argue with the fact that he's a head coach that has a Super Bowl ring as a head coach, you know. So obviously he has his qualifications and nobody is taking away from that. I think what's more troublesome is how, you know, things have seemingly fall, uh, fallen apart in their talks with Byron Leftwich. I mean, for all intents and purposes, after they interviewed him the second time and he was in person, that Tuesday, there seemed to be momentum building towards that. And, you know, just from the conversations that I've had with sources um, in the midst of uh, negotiations and all the granular details that you go into once you start trying to really figure out if you are a fit, um, you know, from what I'm hearing, you know, demands and certain things are asked for. Um, and I don't even know if the word uh, is, is best to say demands, but, you know, things that you feel like you need <laughs> to be comfortable in coming to an organization. And, um, you know, my understanding is that there was some umbrage taken to that and it led to 
uh, the situation where the Jaguars uh, put out that they had another interview um, that they were interested in having with Nathaniel Hackett and Matt Eberflus. And obviously now uh, Byron Lefwich is, you know, not in the fold and they have Peterson um, as the new head coach. But that is troublesome when you consider the fact that the Jaguars uh, fan base was very much behind uh, Byron Leftwich. This is a coordinator uh, who has won a Super Bowl. We can have the debate as to, you know, how uh, good of a coach you think he is when he already has Tom Brady. But there are a lot of coaches, uh, Nathaniel Hackett, who have benefited from having even Aaron Rodgers as their uh, quarterback and what have you. So I do find that troublesome when you couple that with the fact that out of the nine vacancies, uh, that they were at the uh, head coach position, that none of them so far have been filled by um, a person of color. Yes, that is which is extremely, is extremely disappointing and disappointing yes. considering the situation. Mm-hmm. I I think that I would have loved Byron Leftwich for that job, and it seemed like mm-hmm. it was a, a done deal. But I think Doug Peterson will do a good job there. I if I'm Byron Leftwich though. And, you know, we've heard some of the reports about why he ended up not getting that job because of the concessions that he wanted. I don't want to go to an organization that has a a history of losing that's also not going to let me come in and do things the way that I want to do them. So in some ways, it may be a blessing in disguise. I think Byron Leffitt would be a great option for the Saints. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you want to have everything that makes you comfortable, but I still think it begs the question. I mean, listen, just to be quite frank, a lot of people around the league are just talking about the presence of uh, general manager Trent Baalke and 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 how, um, you know, uh, synergistic is that relationship, you know, with him being there with the organization Um, And how that impacted candidates and their desire to be there or obviously not end up being there so that I think that's something that Shad Khan really has to uh, further um, dig into. There are reports now that Rick Spillman, you know, potentially may end up uh, joining the organization, obviously not in the GM capacity. We'll see if eventually over time Trent ends up reporting to Rick or how that, you know, front office structure could look if Spielman joins. And that obviously would provide another sounding board within that organization. They have great pieces to work with. You need to build with the quarterback. Um, But I would be remiss not to mention that a lot of people around the league are talking about uh, Trent's presence and uh, the impact on uh, the hiring process this time around. A lot of people around the league and Jacksonville fans. (laughs) <laughs> on Twitter, they are not. Oh, happy you know, about get, it. you know, some of them wanted to burn it down on Twitter. Let's, you know, they are not happy. You know, they're twi- t- you know tweeting at me like Joe Cena is. You know, what can you do and all this other <laughs> stuff, and they are not happy. And you know, when that fan base gets into a lather, they are not going to let you forget about it. So, listen, that owner needs it to work out after everything that happened with Urban Meyer. So, yeah. um, you're not going to argue with Peterson there, and, and hopefully, for the quarterback's sake, uh, this moves in uh, the right direction. But really, too, uh, Joy, I just wanted to kind of go back and t- with the Brian Flores thing. I just wanted to get even your thought. And we could talk about this when people continue to talk about, um, you know, the lawsuit with Brian Flores and vocalizing this notion, um, which obviously is historically rooted. And it's not like we don't understand where it's coming from. Just talking about the risk and even Brian Flores uh, knowing that uh, he has put his career in jeopardy. But I'm curious, like, even what do you think about just how much we vocalize, you know, oh, you know, he might, you know, never coach in the NFL again, or his career is in jeopardy. How much do you think just even our vocalizing of that further embeds it into all of our consciousness, you know, to kind of perpetuate that, you know, the notion of there being life in the tongue and all those other things. I just, that when I hear people go on and on about that, even regardless of whether it's accurate to me, it's just bothersome. I feel like when we're vocalizing that we should focus on uh, what we feel should be the positive outcome, what we feel should be the substantive review of these claims, rather than constantly repeating the consequence of trying to, you know, uh, analyze whether something is wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Justina. I mean, we talk about this uh, behind the scenes uh, in many regards in this business and others about the consequences of speaking out against power, speaking out against uh, traditional 
practices, discriminatory practices, or if you yourself have been in a situation like that, what's going to happen if you actually speak up about it? And then when you do speak up about it, you're chastised for speaking up about it because you're probably risking your career. And then you're immediately called a liar and examined and picked apart and the credibility of your statements are picked apart and the credibility of your character is picked apart as if the the, uh, entity or the person that you're accusing is to be protected first rather than uh, the victim Mm. or, you know, the the alleged victim in the circumstance. I agree with you. I do think there is something to constantly uh, affirming the idea that Brian Flores will never have another opportunity to coach because of the challenge that he has presented. I, I mean, I'm speaking from my perspective. I would not hold this against Brian Flores, particularly because we saw the reports before the lawsuit came out about why he was let go in a big, a lot of the reports backed up what his lawsuit is saying, which is that he refused to give in to the owner's demands and compromise his integrity. Now, we didn't know it was this far, but this is a man who lost his job, by all accounts, before the lawsuit for not compromising his integrity. And now that he is, has the lawsuit and is making these accusations, his integrity is in question. <laughs> like, who you are and where you come from, obviously, should matter in these situations. But what you're saying should also matter. And that was my issue with the giant statement, which is, You're being so aggressive and dismissive and everyone is just, this is outrageous and and defamatory and there's no merit. Like, but we have the evidence, like we have the evidence, as you just mentioned, that there's been no black coaches hired in the middle of this situation. Not that anything should be forced, but no one is really looking at this situation, at least publicly and saying, Hey, it wasn't us that participated in this, but this is a problem and we would like to help. We're not guilty, but we would like to help. Yeah, Yeah, just acknowledge the situation. And and I think that's 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 important. Um, Justina, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate Mm -hmm. you coming on. Uh, My sister, senior NFL insider (laughs) for USA Today, NFL insider, CBS Sports. And of course, check out her show host. She's the host of The Crew and Undefined with Justina Anderson covering this league for a long time and does an excellent job. Thank you, Justina. Thank you, Joy. Have a good show. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.